Hello, welcome to Rigenix. As already discussed in my previous videos, the design patterns are classified into three categories, creational, structural, and behavioral. Today we are going to discuss another creational design pattern, the builder, which is like factory pattern deals with creation of object. The understanding of all factory patterns will help you to understand why builder pattern is there and when to use it. So I strongly recommend you to go through my factory pattern videos before watching this. Consider subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to see all the simplified and excited videos on C-Sharp which will help you to become a better programmer. By end of this video, you will have complete understanding on what is builder pattern, when should you use it and how is it different from factory patterns. We will discuss about typical scenario where you can think of using this pattern with code example. Please be with me till the end to make your builder pattern concept crystal clear. Okay, so let's start. When you want to create an object, factory pattern looks to be the best, is it not? Where it completely separates the object creation process. But then the question comes, why other creational design patterns? This is primarily because the object creation might be complex depending on the scenario. It is highly possible that if you don't choose right way of creating object, then you might end up creating object in an inefficient way which might be unreadable and unmaintainable. And this is one of the reasons why we have built a pattern. As per Gang of Four definition, build a pattern is defined as separate the construction of a complex object from its representation so that the same construction process can create different representations. I will explain this UML diagram once we understand the initial bits and pieces of this pattern. Now, what do you understand by a complex object? Generally, a complex object is the one which are made up of multiple parts. Now, as you have seen here, loan account builder is our complex object. It contains the attributes like username, password, loan account number, is loan insured, loan status, interest rate, loan amount, etc. Or in plain coding terminology, it could be a class that receives multiple constructor parameters which can at times increase or decrease. Please pay attention to the number of arguments here. Let me show you this in Visual Studio. So here I have a class called bank loan account and only one constructor with several parameters. We know that any class that has more than three arguments creates code smell and hence not a good practice. As Robert C. Martin has stated, the ideal number of arguments for a function is zero. Next comes one followed closely by two. Three arguments should be avoided where possible. More than three requires very special justification and then shouldn't be used anyway. In our case, these many arguments also clearly tell that anytime these arguments can increase or decrease as well. Once this argument increases, it will be extremely difficult for you to manage the code as it will adversely impact code readability. So this is not an efficient way of building this object where we have a lot of parameters and especially when we anticipate that the parameters might increase or decrease. Now let's come to the next part of the definition and see another scenario. The second part says the same construction process can create multiple representations. Say you want to have a different representation of this class. Perhaps say you have another class called loan insurance processor. Let's quickly create that class. Now say in this class, you need an instance of bank loan account class. But this loan insurance processor class is interested to create the object with only loan account number, loan amount and is loan insured. Is this possible here? No. With the current design, you cannot create separate representation of this class. It means it has to pass all these parameters while instantiating this class. If the phrase separate representation of the class is confusing you at this moment, please bear with me for some time and everything will be clear. Let's go back to our slide. Let's assume this is your complex object we have just seen. Now, how does build a pattern helps? The pattern can build the object part by part, joining all simple and needed parts together. It means it can pick the required arguments and can create a different representation of it. 
which ultimately means that it can instantiate this class with only required attributes. Here we had one class, bank loan account, but using builder pattern we can create more than one representation of it. Let's flip to Visual Studio and quickly look at the code implementation. As you can see, this class has a big number of ever-increasing constructor parameter. So this could be one of the use case where we can use builder pattern. If the class would have been like this with multiple constructor overloaded, then also it would have been a good contender for builder pattern. Let's create a loan account builder class. The idea is to go step by step or part by part and build the object with the required attribute. Now in factory, we have the method parameters. With builder, all parameters will become a field and these fields will be set using a separate method. Builders practically are most often constructed using a self-referencing method. Hence the methods will return the same builder object so that next method can be chained. Let's quickly implement this. Let's create our private fields. To make things faster, let's copy and rename the fields. As mentioned earlier, this field will be set through a method. So let's create the appropriate method to set these fields. All these methods should return self as these are self-referencing methods which will help us in method chaining later. Let's quickly create other required methods as well. Let's modify these to appropriate data type. Finally, let's create our main build method, which will return this object as per client's requirements. Let's add reference to our consumer application. Let's consume it at consumer's end. Let's add the namespace. You can see we have all the methods here. Let's chain only the required methods. Here our loan account one object contains all attributes but we can always create loan account object with few required attributes as well. Let's create one such object. Let me copy loan account one. Let's create this object without credential. Now this object is also completely valid but contains only account number, loan amount and interest rate. I hope you have realized that how you can create a separate representation of the same object. While creating object, there are certain things that you always need to take care that is, should not allow invalid object to be created. That means we are yet to be done with the object creation using builder pattern. Let's add few validations. For instance, account number cannot be zero. Let's create a private method can build to check that. Let's put the validation before returning the build object. Let's throw a general exception here with a message cannot build a valid object. Let's build our class library. Let's see if our validation is working or not. Let me comment this and let me remove the account number from our object creation. Let me run this and see if it throws an exception. Yes, it throws an appropriate exception cannot build a valid object. I hope you realize that how efficiently you can put your validation logic. In fact, you can even do per method validation. Let's see one more benefit of builder pattern. Now say you want to add one more attribute loan status to the object. No problem. We can add it very easily. Let's see that. Let's create a self-referencing method. For now, let's name it loan status. 
Let's create our private field. That's it. We can add this attribute to our object now. You can see how easy it is to add and remove attributes now. This is the most common way of implementing builder pattern. However, this is not exactly like the way it has been done by Gang of Four. I definitely wanted to explain the way it has been explained in Gang of Four UML, but unfortunately video will be too long. I will create second part of this video where I will explain typically as per the UML given by Gang of Four. For now, before wrapping this video, let's quickly see how builder pattern is different from factory and also list down when we should use this pattern. Factory patterns are good where they encapsulate object creation by decoupling the creation of object and the consumer. But they fail to create object when the construction process varies a lot. For instance, in our example, for most of the classes, some of the parameters are optional. Like for loan insurance processor, we require only three attributes. But since factory receives fixed signature, if we use factory, we are forced to send all these parameters. It means factory method cannot create a different representation of the object. If the object is heavy and its creation is complex, then all the complexity will be part of factory classes. At times, this might be confusing. So we can consider using builder pattern here. I hope it is clear to you that even after having factory patterns for creating an object, why we have built a pattern. So let's quickly discuss when to use this pattern. I would like to repeat here what I always say. Do not try to use a pattern because you know it. Only use it if it completely fit to your solution. Because I believe that it is always tempting to implement the design pattern if we know it even if it does not completely suits to our requirement. And when it comes to build a pattern, it is one of the pattern which has specific use cases where to use. Most often abstracting interface using other design pattern might solve your problem. Having said that, let's quickly see when to use this pattern. If you have a class in your application that has multiple constructors and you anticipate it might increase as well, then it's highly possible that builder pattern suits to your solution because multiple constructor means multiple representation of the class and as we have seen builder pattern helps in creating multiple representations hence that's the time when you should consider refactoring your class with builder pattern another use case would be when you have multiple parameters passed via constructor and you do variety of computation before setting up the fields then you can use this pattern as you can perform the validation in well-constructed separate method which would make your code be more readable and maintainable. You can use this pattern when you have to chain your calls together. This pattern will help us in building the object in certain sequence. That's all I have in this video. Please comment and let me know if you have any question. As mentioned earlier, there will be second part coming in where I have explained the other variant by taking build a UML as base. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If it did, then please hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with others to see more such contents. Thank you.